If you finally got your stream looking good and your mic is sounding extra crispy, but your chat is a literal ghost town because no one knows when someone followed or subscribed, you're destroying your own growth. Streaming is all about celebration. And if you aren't using the right tools, then you're leaving money and followers on the table. So in this video, I'm showing you how to set up professional stream alerts that work in OBS Studio, Streamlabs, and even Meld Studio. Now there's a million third-party sites out there like Streamlabs or Stream Elements for alerts, but today we're using Twitch's native alert system. Why? Because it's the only way to unlock those massive full screen celebrations and hype train alerts that actually get your chat hyped up. So buckle up because we're going to old boring stream design to fun celebration high energy broadcasting that your mama ain't ready for. Head on over to your Twitch account and then go to the top right corner, click your icon and then hit creator dashboard. By the way, every Monday on Twitch, I do live office hours to answer your questions. So link is in the description if you want to get your questions answered. Once you're on the creator dashboard, look to the left hand side, you're going to click the alert alerts tab and you'll see a bunch of stuff on the screen which is a little intimidating but you're just going to navigate to the right hand side of the screen and click create alert box that purple button so click that and you're going to see all of these different alerts that we can control such as followers subs gifted sub bits charity hype trains channel points goals and more so to get us started we're going to look at the new follow alert so we're just going to click on new follow and then the middle is going to be our preview so that's what it's going to look like and then the top right you're going to see all of these different settings that's how we're going to customize our alerts here so if we start with general, you can name it whatever you want. This is just for your sake. No one else is going to see it just for categorization. For your alert condition, that's going to vary depending on what type of alert you're working with. So followers, you're really only going to have one condition because you can only get a new follower. That's pretty much it. Versus if you have bits, if you click on bits, for example, the alert condition could be cheered at least X amount or the first time cheer or cheered exactly this amount. So you can have a lot more flexibility and control depending on what the actual alert type is but with follower alerts you can only really have one condition so don't even worry about that underneath that is duration 10 seconds is a very satisfactory amount of time chat no more no less 10 seconds is very fair and satisfying for the average person underneath that is animations and you can choose the animation style so if you want it to fade in roll in slide up slide down zoom in all of that stuff you can choose that here and then next to it is how long that animation takes so if you want it to take two seconds you would put two here and two there and then we're going to hit save changes anytime we make any changes otherwise we're not going to see those changes being made make sure you're saving your changes all the time and for this we're going to hit preview alert because that's going to preview it in this box here for us on the actual website so we're going to hit preview alert it's going to take two seconds to fade in and two seconds to fade out Usually that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave it at one just to make it quicker. And then duration, let's probably leave it to like five seconds actually. So I changed my mind. So I'm gonna hit save changes and then we're gonna move on to the layout. Layout is just gonna be where the image is in according to the text. So right now the image is on top of the text. If you wanna have it opposite, you can click that one. If you wanna have it over it, you can do that. If you wanna have it next to it, so on and so forth, I'm gonna leave it like this. You can choose the background, you can choose the padding. So how much space there is in between the two things. You can have rounded corners. But honestly, this is a transparent image or GIF, so you don't really see the corners. But if you have a GIF that you downloaded from like a GIF site, then usually that's gonna be like a raw square, which is ugly. So that's when you can choose rounded corners. It'll round them off for you, making it look a lot better. You can also add a drop shadow if you want, but since this is a transparent image, I wouldn't really recommend it. It just makes it look weird. So we're gonna ignore that. And then we're gonna move on to text and speech. And we're gonna see the message because this will pop up right underneath here. So it says the username just followed. You can have it say username just joined the club. You can have emojis. You can do whatever you want by clicking this you can add your own emojis which is cool but we're gonna keep it as is but you can customize the font customize the weight of the font the size of the font if you want it bigger smaller whatever text layout if you want on the left don't know why you'd want that basically you can do all of that stuff here maybe even add a little drop shadow on the text could be nice and then you could have text to speech if you would like you can choose the voice of who says it you can choose the volume how long it takes the delay all of that sort of stuff but for now I'm gonna keep it off but you're more than welcome to mess with the text to speech settings if you'd like moving down to the visuals and sounds this is where really an alert turns into an alert because you can upload your own files whether that be your own gif or your own image and then you just literally upload the file here and choose it but if you're lazy or you don't know how to do that you can just hit the image library and you're going to see a bunch of already free gifs and different things of that nature that twitch has already provided for you for free so you can simply just click on it and click add to alert in order to import that file so you can customize it without even being a graphic designer which is really
really nice because the only skills that I have in graphic design is knowing how to use paint and that's pretty bad. But I did design my MySpace in 2005 and that was pretty cool. Same thing with the alert sounds. If you have your own alert sound that you got from the interwebs, then you can go and upload it there. Same thing with the sound library. Literally, they have three pages of different things that you can use. Click on it, add to alert, and then you'll be able to adjust the volume for that sound as well. But I'm gonna leave all of these on the default. And then the celebration. This is what makes the native Twitch alerts the best option for alerts, in my opinion, because you can't get this option for any third party plugins or different tools. You have to use this system inside Twitch. And basically what celebrations are, are pretty freaking cool. So we're gonna turn it on with this little button and then you can have the effects of fireworks, flamethrower rain. We'll start with fireworks. You can choose the intensity of light, moderate, extreme. So the amount of like confetti and things of that nature. We'll start with light just so you can see the difference. And then you can choose the area. So this will be just over your stream uh, for your viewers. You're not actually gonna be able to see it unless you look at your Twitch stream. And then if you choose this one, it's the top of chat only. And if you choose this one, it's everywhere. So this one everywhere would usually be set for like big donations or hype trains that get to a certain level, things of that nature. So for little follow alerts, I might even just do a light intensity just over the stream if you even wanted to be extra, but maybe for something as common as follow alerts, I wouldn't have it, but maybe a donation or sub would kind of justify the use of a celebration. But I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So we're gonna hit save changes and then I'm gonna hit preview alert and you're gonna see these are the little fireworks going off right here. So you can see the celebration of my different emotes and bits and things of that nature. So that's the fireworks. But if we wanted to do flamethrower and maybe turn the intensity up a bit and let's do everywhere, then we can do save changes, preview alert. You're gonna see this is what the flamethrower looks like with extra emojis, which is that moderate intensity. And it's gonna go all over the screen for your viewers. And then let's say we wanna do rain and then extreme. We're gonna save changes and then do preview alert. It's gonna rain down emojis and they're gonna be freaking huge covering everything because the intensity is set on extreme. So you might not wanna have this on just for followers unless it's like your first couple streams just cause it is exciting then. But after you get a bunch of followers, it might become a little bit annoying to your viewers, giving them fatigue. But just know that you have all of these options for pretty much all of these different variations on the side. Prime subs, resubs, new subs, gifted subs, bits, combos, pretty much all of these things you have control over, especially hype trains, which is one of the reasons why we use the native Twitch alert. And it's the same exact settings on the side. So general layout, text to speech, visual, everything's the same celebration. So literally you will rinse and repeat this for all of the different alerts that you want. And if for whatever reason you don't want to assert an alert, like you don't want alerts for bits or whatever, Ever, don't know why you wouldn't you would just simply turn it off and then you wouldn't have any of those alerts trigger in your alert box but knowing you you're gonna want all of these turned on and you can go and customize them how we just did this follower alert just make sure after all the changes you make hit save changes then once we've saved our changes we're gonna go to the bottom right corner of the screen where it says browser source URL and we're gonna hit the purple copy button then once you hit that purple copy button we're gonna go into our streaming software it's gonna be the same process for any of the software so just follow along and if you're wondering where I got this starting soon screen. I got it in my streamer starter pack, which is linked in the description down below. But in order to add the alert box to our software, we're going to go to sources and click the plus button. And we're going to add what's called a browser source. So click on browser and we're going to call this alert box. So we know what it is. And then we're going to hit OK. And then from here, we're going to get rid of the current URL and we're going to paste in the URL that we just copied and then we're going to hit OK. Now we can drag this box anywhere on the screen and this is where our alert's going to show up. But obviously you can't see any alerts because we haven't triggered any. So we need to go preview one over on Twitch. Brought them up side by side so you can see them live in action. But make sure if you're making any changes on here, you always hit save changes in the top right corner because otherwise those changes will not be made into the actual alert box. And when we're ready to test our follower alert, we're going to click on the follow alert, make sure that it is selected. Then we're going to hit send test alert. So we're going to hit send test alert and you're going to see that we have our beautiful follower alert right here in our OBS studio. And then pro tip with your alert audio is that if you're using desktop audio, you don't have to do anything. Anytime your alerts go off, they're going to automatically go through your desktop audio so you can hear it and your stream can hear it. But if you have split your audio sources and you're not using desktop audio, then pay attention. However, if you just use desktop audio, then ignore this. Don't do this. If you have your audio sources split up, what you can do is 
double click on the alert box and then hit control audio via OBS, hit OK. And then when the alerts go through, the alert sound will come through this box and not desktop audio because you're not gonna really be using this anymore because what happens is when it goes through here, you're gonna need to go to advanced audio sources and you're gonna change alert box from monitor off to monitor and output so that way you can monitor it on your end so you can hear the alerts and output it to your viewers however when you do that if you have desktop audio then it's going to trigger an echo because it's going to play through to the alert box and the desktop audio which is why you don't want to do this if you're using desktop audio only if you have split all your audio sources to the point where you're not using desktop audio which i know is a little bit confusing but if you want to learn how to split your audio sources and do all that hubbub i'm going to leave a video at the end of this video so stick around and just like that you have professional alerts running in just a few minutes but look alerts are just one piece of the puzzle if you want the full step-by-step -step roadmap to going from zero viewers to a full-time creator you need to join my free streamers masterclass which is linked in the description down below but now you got to learn how to split your audio sources so you can play music without getting copyright striked and i explain it all in this video to the side of me so give that video a watch my name's cody and i will see you in the next one